Hello there, everyone, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in TNO, the last of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Oh, America Lover, but uh, we're going with a certain Lyndon Baines Johnson Arena. Uh, but we got to talk about Inauguration Day. LBJ, Lyndon Johnson, the trustworthy new face of the Democratic Party, he took the oath this morning at the Capitol, was formally inaugurated as president of the good old U.S. of A. The thunderous applause from thousands gathered on the mall. Stepping up to the podium, President Johnson faced the TV camera and spoke to the nation. My fellow countrymen, the oath I've taken for God is not mine alone, but ours together. We are one nation and one people. Our future is the people who rest not on individuals, but on all citizens working together to a greater cause. Our nation's journey towards a great society shall continue on, always trying and always gaining in the cause to build a greater America for all those who will come after us. So, though not to suffer the same injustice that plagues so many Americans today, in a land of bountiful wealth, people go hungry. In a land of peerless scholars, children unable to read and write, and a land of healing miracles, our neighbors all suffer and die. This should not be so, for before this generation of Americans is finished, our enemies of poverty, injustice, and equality will not just retreat, but be conquered. When any citizen denies his fellow, saying his color is not mine, in that moment he betrays America. A great society insists upon the liberty of all Americans to pursue happiness, no matter the color. Each of us must find a way to advance the purpose of this great society, and it's in that our course is abundantly clear. The president stepped down from the podium, smiling and waving to the cheering masses as he made his way to the statutory hall to enjoy the traditional congressional luncheon. There'd be time enough to spread national change. After he'd eaten, hail to the chief as we talk about President Johnson's presidency. After more than a year of hard campaign, from primaries to the general election, President Lyndon Baines Johnson sits in the Oval Office. Campaign under bold claims of a great society, plans to reshape America by any means necessary. These planned reforms represent the continuation of Kennedy's torch of progressivism and will truly change the fabric of the nation. With sweeping civil rights legislation, Medicare for all, of course, and ending the poverty-stricken state of much of the country. In addition, Johnson also claims to approve the military, reforming it into a fighting machine fit for the modern world. However, before he can begin his plan, cascade of reforms to begin the fabric of American society, he must gain the nation's trust. In his inaugural address, Johnson will bring the entire country up to speed on his plans and the future. Mistakes of Nixon. Legacy of Kennedy. Uh, let's go. The Kennedy presidency, though tragically cut short, represented possibly the best Republican Democrats could be. His few short, optimistic months were possibly the most important to determine the future of not just the RDC, RDC, but America as a whole. Just as we had monster mistakes in Nixon, if the RDC is to survive in its current state, we must also continue the legacy of Kennedy. President Johnson will carry Kennedy's torch of progressivism and unity until America is made whole once more. A message from McCormick to the successor. Mr. Johnson, as I write this now, snow has fallen in D.C. The White House is strangely quiet all. All but the most essential staff have resigned in advance of the inauguration. I have little business to conduct, but to play part of the card of caretaker and reflect on the previous four years of my career. I remember when you entered Congress as a freshman representative. With a devotion to committee work and political courage in all aspects of congressional business, it was clear you were destined for greatness. Your focus not merely on se sectional issues, but on issues of broad and national importance, deeply impressed like the likes of Mr. Rayburn and Mr. Vincent, who took it upon themselves to guide and mentor you. The late President of FDR came to know and appreciate your dedication and ability, even after you moved on from the House of the Senate. I also held you in deep respect and counted you as a close friend. I have no doubt. You'll use your abilities for the betterment of our nation. You've always been a hard driver devoted to the betterment and welfare of the people. At a time of great disunity, tragedy, and upheaval, this country needs those qualities more than ever before. You need to rely on all your skill and ability to win the passage of progressive legislation that could transform this country and complete the work of Roosevelt. Eyes now are Kefalfer. You don't need any further advice from me on these matters. You know, however, that you have my unending support. I pray to God for your success and I'll do what I can for you in the meanwhile. Yours, McCormick. A sparked small smile on the president's weary face and is filed away. The inauguration speech, my fellow countrymen, on this occasion. The oath that I've taken before you is not one I take alone, but one that we take together. We are one nation, one people. We may have different colors or speak different tongues, but the banner which we follow remains the same. We're all Americans, and as such, we must work together for the further betterment of the country. Work together for the creation of a great society. For the past few decades, life in America has been greatly diminished. There are recessions of the 30s and 50s, the loss in the World War, the Akagi Accords, and so on. Our nations faced hardship for so long and suffered so much. It's easy to forget what we once were and what we could be. America whole is strong, but her people do not reflect such. In a land of great wealth, families must not live in hopeless poverty. In a land rich in harvest, children must not go hungry. In a land of healing miracles, neighbors must not suffer and die unattended or untended. In a great land of learning and progress, young people must be taught to read and write. In a great society, the people have equal opportunity and the rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. At present, America does not reflect this ideal of a great society. Politicians in Washington vote on party lines rather than by beliefs or principles. The minorities of our nation still toil under great discrimination, and more than a quarter of the country lives in poverty. I say to you now, America, this cannot stand. I have served this nation for more than 30 years of my life. I have struggled against the waste of our potential, our freedom, our great wealth, but I cannot do it alone. I will repeat today what I told or said on the sorrowful day in November last year. I will leave and I will do the best I can, but you, America, you must look within your own hearts to the old promises and to the old dreams for guidance. The ideas of the old America will become the creed of the new one. God bless you all and God bless this great nation. Strong words from a strong leader. So we can talk about the policy outlook, but that's kind of what we can ignore. We're currently, like we read earlier, doing the legacy of Kennedy, the mistakes of Nixon. President Tricky Dick, of course. <clears throat> 
Uh, his administration was, for lack of a better term, disastrous during his term. The South African War began, the civil rights came to a head, and the United States suffered the worst presidential scandal in a short history. After his resignation, and still during his term, his successor, JFK, was assassinated. If Johnson regained the trust of the public back towards not only himself, but the RD coalition as a whole. He wants to assure that people of these issues will be solved, assurances that the America will win her foreign entanglements, and full equality of the race is achieved, and that no scandal corruption will occur. Hopefully. As you can see, we're doing pretty well in Africa. Um, I, I have played as uh, LBJ before, like... I have done this campaign before, but that was oh, over a year ago at the time of this recording. So the economy system has changed since then. <laughs> Excuse me. The economy system has changed since I last played as Johnson. And then, you know, a few more updates since I've last played as Johnson. So I really wanted to see if what it would be like, you know, um, with what we currently have. Also, we're trying to do the whole England thing, which is a pain in the butt sometimes, too. Uh, we have the home front, of course, like normal, the CIA, which we're mostly done with. We're trying to wrap it up at this point, but. Kind of like the South African War at this point, you know. We want to do well. We're we're going to do well, but uh, you know, we'll see what happens in due time, my friends. You know, this does always takes a while. The campaign slightly speeds up later on, but um, I think I've read this one before. Uh, yeah. Oh, the triple lance invades Paraguay. Nice. I'm gonna read this. Please go ahead. So I won't read everything, but I'll read pretty much everything. Just mostly everything. Oh, Bolivia moves. Please. Can you just get a Barra? That'd be nice. And Bullerstadt? Yeah, Operation Success is always good to have. Um, over here, we always want to keep it on this. Decrease Einheits, or if these guys. Well, Einheits pack isn't doing so well, so we're going to really try to decrease England's influence, even though it's much better to try to get uh, influence for America every turn. Bolivia's falling apart. These guys have not fallen apart yet. What's happening in the last? Looking pretty okay. They're doing well, which is good to see. Uh, can we suppress anybody here? No, no suppression. Well, then we'll just keep doing this. Because most of the research is done, not all of it. We have like two or three researches left. Battle for Salisbury, if you're wondering about both these, please go right ahead. Better safe than sorry. The Battle for Salisbury. Oh, maybe I should do that side instead next time, but that's alright, whatever. Because we do have six divisions over here, which is very nice, actually. Here, if you can't take them out. I do have some occasional comments. Um, you know, this is the first episode of this uh, campaign. So this is play like, can you play as Dolvanga's Brigade? Can you try to reunify West Russia under uh, Dolvanga? And unfortunately, you cannot. But yeah, that'd be cool if we could. He's a disunifier, so. Uh, factory out, but I'm not super concerned about that. Let's go with this one. Nice. What's gonna do here? Here. Oh. It's not bad. This is the one we want to do. We need to get more command power and political power. Oh, we always need more command power, but still. What is left, huh? Nice. Oh, and happy auto saving everybody. Also, we have some water here. No coffee, but I do have a sugar free Red Bull. The first time I've ever announced on the channel, I do drink an occasional Red Bull to keep me nice and, uh, well, stuff like that. Ooh, Operation Success, great. And the war yet goes on. Awesome. We'll probably lose it. Also, I keep doing tab tax. Like, I always like paying off the debt. I know it's not the most optimal thing to do, but I always like paying off the debt. I'm, I'm just weird like that, so. Yes. Thank you. Nine, twenty-two billion. Fruits for service here for duty. Four is together. It's time we move forward together. The pains of the past decades, with the humiliation and distrust that our citizens have with the government, must, must come to an end. The country needs to get, take care of its citizens, and in order to do so, ah, there they go. Um, we must endeavor to bring forth the program to help all Americans and, bring, and further unite our country into a greater society. A greater society that helps Americans of all classes, colors, and convictions, so they do not suffer because of conditions that are not always in the control. Onwards, my friends. Onwards. Lay the groundwork, secure congressional support. Um, sure. In order for a great society to pass, we need Congress. We must secure votes in the House and Senate in order to get this massive bill to the President's desk. Let's form a strategy in order to secure those votes. We can possibly use a bully pulpit on our own party to bring more of our indecisive allies to vote, or we can make deals with some of the more moderate members of the MPP to get this bill passed. Either way, let's secure the need to back and achieve success and lay the groundwork. Uh, policy analysts, researchers, economists, and public administrators who have experience in running domestic programs will be needed in order to prepare the greatest reform in American history. We must gather all of them to start hammering out the policy alongside the various political committees working in Congress. Let's make sure they have a bill we're fighting the for. The Oval Office sat quiet and serene, opposed with the usual state of interruption after interruption. President Johnson, as was typical, sat at his desk reading, signing, and dotting the duties of a president. However, it wasn't an interruption. Two men forced away to hold the proposal. Johnson finished signing his last paper and looked up to Walter Jenkins and Edmund Muskie. Well, Johnson started. You've been sitting here for a good couple of minutes. What do you need? Order Jenkins shuffled in the seat. We've got to make a choice, Mr. President, he said. We want to pass some reforms. We can make friends with the Republicans. We can press the Nationalists. No one else has the votes to secure a majority with us. The progressives are notoriously unreliable, as I'm sure you're aware. 
We're already making friends with the Republicans, aren't we? Asked Johnson. Yeah, it's much keep again, but they're proving pretty stubborn. If we want their support, we'll have to make genuine concessions to them. All right, what exactly what do you mean by present nationalist? Intimidation, blackmail, that sort of thing. Hmm, said Johnson, scratching his chin. What do you think, Muskie? Personally, I don't think the Nationals are the way, or will cave as easily as we think. Republicans are the way to go. I'll make a cough. Well, let's take a look see. 23 Republicans, 32 Democrats. So we are the Democrat Party here. Uh, RDC Democrats, dynastic liberalism. There are 20 progressives and 23 Nationalists. They're literally the same amount of Nationalists as they are Republicans. And, uh, they're Democrats. But, uh, yeah. Hmm. Intimidate them? I don't want to do anything here. Play nice with Republicans? We could probably do that one. Play in the groundwork. Or deal with progressives. And we lose a lot of political power and stability. On our own. Yeah. I'll introduce the concept. Next, we must start introducing the idea of a great society built of the Republic. We must explain to them that our great ideal goal is in reforming their country to make it far more fair for all Americans. We must show them that we idly want to make every American wealthier, happier, and more freer in their lives. Our introduction will start in major universities. The major cities and massive venues make people excited for a great society bill. The people must feel excited in order, public, in order for public support to increase. As we keep an eye on this, because we have two days left. And we're doing it here in Colombia now, too, which is not bad. If we go there, we can cut these guys off. Yeah, look at that. Nice. Hey, the great society. I'll go to Cali. That actually might be enough to kill them off. But President Johnson uh, sat in the Oval Office opposite of the Vice President Edmund Muskie and the prominent advisor Nelson Rockefeller, of course. Um, so began President Johnson sitting at the Resolute Desk, the Great Society. We've tested the waters. We've got the votes. What exactly are we going to push for? Edmund Muskie scratched his chin, eyeing Johnson Worley. I thought we figured that out a long time ago. Things have changed, Ed, or Johnson replied. We've made compromises to get to the support we have. Now, what are the major things that we could get away with? I won't give it the civil rights push. Kennedy died for it, and I won't let his death be in vain. More than just voting security as well. I want the whole racist, institutionalized disease ripped out. Ruin stem. Fair enough, said Rockefeller. I could probably get that through without much issue. I think we should throw in some anti-poverty legislation, too. We're still in a recession, Johnson. I'm not sure what the bills would precisely entail, but we should probably include them. Fair enough, Ed. You said something at one point about Environmental Protections Act, right? Uh, uh, Musk United, all right then, said Johnson. A trial of civil rights, social programs, and environmental protections. The groundwork for a great society. Uh, gentlemen? Yes. Yes, yes. Form task forces. Daily political power, nice. And admin efficiency change? Good. Then we must study the entirety of American society in detail. We know through every single aspect from education, poverty, infrastructure, healthcare, welfare, the arts, and so forth. We must also compare these aspects and pair our plans with the current budget to adjust accordingly. Once our studies are over, all the data that we crew can be used to complete the final formulation to perfect the great society bill. God, I sometimes hate that South African word. It just takes so long. It's, and, you know, you, you do it so often, you know. It's not bad by any means, but, like, it, it's... We've done it before. And Lepo, the whole will fall, too, which is nice. Uh, you lost that battle, which sucks, but... Second battle? Uh, actually, it's more like the third or fifth battle of Johannesburg, actually. But whatever. All right, let's come over here now. All right, so they're at increase by zero. Hey, we're... Oh, we're actually higher than England. No, New England? England. Um, you always want to increase your own strength. I want to keep as much command power for now as possible, because as much as I want to do that one, but we have enough money, that doesn't matter to us too much. Um, can we suppress anybody? That'd be kind of nice. What else we got going on around here? Oh, the Indonesian conflict too, but I really don't want to focus on that at all. Not until later. Let's get this little patch done here first. Nice, 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 nice. Good. I think you go right there too. Nice. Well, they're gonna do win. Or do well, not do win. Speeches across the nation. After months of wrangling behind closed doors and spirited speculation from the press, <clears throat> President Johnson today finally revealed his great society program in full detail to the American public. In a speech given during a guest appearance at the University of Michigan, Johnson laid out his ways his projects would tackle poverty, racial injustice, education, health care, and transportation, amongst other aspects of American society in need of reform. Bound to overhaul the country in our cities, in our countryside, in our classrooms, the president expresses firm belief that the great society is exactly what a country needs in these trying times. The speech drew applause from other intents and many from within the RDs. However, his plans are not without opposition. With the many foreign entanglements America finds herself in, many question whether America can afford the president's proposed programs on top of money vanishing into that quagmire. In addition, some voices within the MPP nationals and the Republicans murmur that many of Johnson's initiatives would be a gross overreach of government authority, with at least one national senator reportedly denouncing him as a power hungry proto fascist for the next few months. President Johnson tends to pass a myriad of bills aimed at implementing his vision. It would take a long, arduous process, and it would certainly be necessary to cut more deals to secure the support necessary to pass the bills, regardless. He believes that no task is too much if uh, it shall render American society truly great. For a better America. But we're on our own. We have the majority in Congress, let's use it. 
The party needs to be whipped out. We can promise some more of our moderate members to support this bill as long as we get some compromised pork p building in place. It'll more likely lose some votes in the South if we get the Great Society Bill to pass, but that's what it'll take. If that's what it takes, it truly means good reform. But, but if that's what it takes, it'll take truly means true reform. The good news as well is that the MPP will not be able to stop this bill as long as the party remains united in the face of obstruction. The downside is the MPP can pick up more conservative members of their elect electorate. Act to secure our congressional majority to pass this bill. It is what it is. It's all politics. Politics good, bad, and ugly? Well, it is what it is. Thinking about this. Hurting Japanese domestic stability? Yeah. It's alright with me. You go here. Let's go here. So you guys go. You guys seem to be doing okay. Because I did throw in some cast down here, so they're doing pretty goddamn awesome. Battle Salisbury again. Oh, got the circle. That sucks, bro. Ah. Armin Revolt. You guys come all down here. Just kill these guys off. Let's go in. Yeah, these guys are doing well up here, but like down here, not so much. Bruh. Oh, we won. Already in Columbia. Holy crap. Remember Operation Sea Line. Ben, uh, bien vendida a la OFN. If you remember that, please go ahead. I've heard this before. The free world grows larger. Awesome. On our own. Mm, Complex status, smoke and mirrors. How's uh, what's Africa doing? They're still doing okay. Cameroon looks like it will fall apart too. And then for the good of America, we core out everyone we can to work with us. Republicans, Democrats, and the opposition, the NPP. If we're all working for the betterment of America, then we should be all on board with the finer education, reducing poverty, improving health care, and ensuring freedom in our lands. We made our case to the Congress. Now they need to get with the program for the good of America. If you learn about America, bro, please go right ahead. Second and what? Come on. There you go. Good. Very nice. Oh, and happy June, everybody. Down for some Red Bull. John D. Lavelle, huh? Well, since we have this, we can escalate this just a little bit more. Losing political power. Um, spend money. We can do that one's fine. We have a little bit of political power. I don't want to use all all up, obviously, but I'll come out there too. There you go. That's what I'll give you for now. Nice. Oh wait, no wait. Which one did they take out? <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, wow. I guess the last one is left is the Rex Commissar at Central Africa. Well, good of America. Let's see. Ah. Ooh. 20. I don't want to spend this, but let's go do it anyways. Oh, they're entering our sphere. Oh, well, I didn't have to do that. Our diplomats are informed that the diplomatic situation to continue this in this course. England will join the OFN and strengthen her position in the Cold War. Well, that's good. That'd be really good. We do here. Operation Leaping Drill. Uh, uh, I don't want her to service manpower. I don't want to spend more com command power either. South Africa, these guys, yeah. The Great Society. My fellow Americans, as president, I want to announce the beginning of a new era. The past three years since our fall from greatness has been marked by continued disappointment with the past weaknesses that the United States has shown to people in the world. 
Americans of the past years have become poor, more poor, sick, hungry, and angry. For example, in an embarrassment over a government's continued failures to help the American people prosper. Even with foreign threats to the swastika, has been no excuse for the past neglect that the administrations before us had shown, but despite our struggles in the past, today is a different day. Today marks a new day in American society, a day in which more Americans can get out of the miseries of poverty and are able to join the workforce to better secure freedom and liberty. A day in which the worries of the sick and suffering can be soothed by medical coverage, thus given for the future health and merriment. A day in which all peoples within this country can pursue happiness. Overall, the American people can prosper forevermore. With the signing of the Great Society Bill, our Great Society Program enhances the lives of every single American and makes sure their needs are taken care of. Ah, oh, Great Society Decisions, based on five pillars, civil rights, welfare, health care, schooling, and the environment. As we build up each pillar of our societies, we'll grow more and more accepted and poverty will begin to fall. Well, let's hope so. Do we have anything about bills passing? No? Barry Goldwater's hardline Republicans, waning. Nelson Rockefeller, Democrats, Hubert Humphrey, and uh, Richard Jr. Richard Jr. Russell. Russell Jr. Well, it's actually often strong, poor faction health is poor with the Dixiecrats. Coalition support from the hardline Republicans is waning. Responsible Republicans, huh? Um, Responsible Republicans, faction health. Coalition support is good, faction health is not good. Support is fine. Coalition health. But my conditions. Responsible bull. Yeah, responsible Republicans. They're like, yeah, yeah. Faction health is not very good, though. Support will go up, which is fine. Um, my standard budgets are plus. Coalition. Support. Hardline. Pursues deregulation, huh? Hawkishness. Decreases. Appease right there. Hmm. Labor Democrat support. So the Democrats. Dixiecrats are fine. Labor Democrats are pretty strong. Dixiecrat support. Call Russell. I could do that anyways. 10%, 40%. I'll do that one because we can. Why not? For funsies. We're here for the funsies. 21 billion, 192 billion. For the good of America. Always for the good of America. Oh, you just go there. Ta-da! England joins the OFN. Okay, so if you're about that, please go ahead. That's actually really good. Nice. Let's get some political power. Basically, we'll get the political power back we just spent. It says you don't get a second chance. Beautiful, my friends. Absolutely beautiful. The Bretons will never be slaves. Well, they better not be. That's the case. Worth uh, of choice. If you're about that, please go ahead. Let's go to the commercial. Nice. A great society. So we want to focus on first. I don't really want to focus on poverty. That's what I want to focus on. I always like focusing on poverty first, though. So. The war on poverty. Threadbare safety net. You lose political power every single day. Oh god. Maybe not. Expansible rights. Um a vote in hand. Suppression of African American weaker uh, Africans vote suppression of African Americans grow weaker. Healthcare for a nation. You lose political power. Teach them well. Head Start programs. That's not bad, too. I like that a lot, actually. Spending on social programs increased by 1%. Reduce their support amongst more conservative states. Sit down with teachers' unions. Assess materials. Elementary school and... Oh, Elementary and Secondary Education Act. They are our future. They are our past. Welfare of the people. Social safety net. That's not bad, too. Get more political power here. Um, you do that one. More growth benefits or prevention is the best cure. Robust safety net, more cost. Proof safety net, more cost though. Create the Office of Economic Opportunity. So, give more political power, which is good. Better admin change. Consolidate previous costs and reducing, effectively reducing them by 50%. That's not bad either. More costs, improve safety, social safety net. Stop gap measures. Um, re visit the WMD bill. Improve healthcare is not bad too. Expand social security, community action. Well, you know, well, let's start with the welfare of the people. And despite illusions of economic success compared to enemies on both the West and East, the country suffering from numerous crises that continue to strike those in the lowest strata of this population. Homelessness, poverty, and an inability to obtain even the most basic services are now endemic to the country. And through a regimen of new programs, President Johnson plans to address a domestic issue facing the nation. For centuries, the federal government has taken a backseat in helping the poor, whether due to constitutional restraints or other impediments. Now that the federal government's role must be re-examined so that one thing can become clear, the phrase promote the general welfare is a mandate, not an ideal. Keep on going. Um, you're going about this. Please go right here, too. Yeah. We're going to part, he thought. Now it's up to them. 
Heard a bunch. Cool. So you have the command power. That's what I think more sure why not. War's not over yet, but we're getting close. And we'll just finish off Central Africa. Rox Commissar Central Africa. Because I mean, oh boy. I don't see them win, but yeah, I guess this time. I suppose so. Oh, what's this? Oh, this is Africa. July 8th? Ooh. So far, not bad. And yeah, Paraguay's gone. Eisenhower's journey across the Thames. I've read this before, too. If you don't like this, please go to Heb. The Beacon of Liberty stretches her torch. Very nice. Green France looking pretty good. I'm glad we got him back. It's weird that Scotland isn't, but England is. It seems like a, it's kind of an oversight. Well, there are the people. Alright, so what do we have here? Um, suppression? No. Alright, right, agrarian society. Very weak on everything. Sweet talk, Democrats. World voters will support the Democratic Party. Sweet talk, Republicans. Secure additional high school funding. Improves the school system. I like that a lot. Uh, education grants for citizens or soldiers, I guess you say. A reduced support for the MPP among the enlisted. Education policies rate goes up for 150 days. Encourage bilingual education. Support in their states along the southern board. Academic base increases as well, but gets more conservatives. Disavow the Dixiecrats, improves civil rights. Dixiecrats support will decrease by 15, but we did increase it by 15 as well. Expand social security eligibility. So improve the social safety network in the country. Poverty will be improved. More expenses. Um, rural voters become more nationalist and join the Republican Party. That's why we need political power. All voters will support the Democrat Party and Republicans. Show more liberal and economic issues. Uh, spot check state programs. Poverty will begin to improve. Improve the health care. Health care quality and societal development will begin to improve as well. And help the environment. Well, let's do this one first. And this improves poverty. Uh, let's do both those. Improve civil rights. I don't want to get too radical yet, because we do have the midterms coming up as well, so... But doing all this stuff seems really kind of decent. Because now rural voters tend to support nationalist causes. So if we do this, rural voters as well as nativist voters, sweet out the Democrats. We can do this one. No, it's this one. Let's just do all these. There we go. Sweet talk Republicans. I don't care about Republicans for right now. Environment. Um, that's 50 more political power. Um, sure. For aiding the environment will be unlocked. Okay. Oh my god. Help the environment in the country. Alaska, Arizona, California, Florida, Idaho, and Montana will approve this. We only have one Earth. Help the environment. Help the environment. Environmentalist movement will support this. We're weak. Very weak on everything but education right now. I care more about poverty. The environment's important. Don't get me wrong. But, like, like poverty. And we're going to need more political power now, too. 20 billion. That's not good. Oh, hello. Um, there you go. Don't need you guys. Save a little bit of money. There you go. Make one division, delete nine. Follow the Leopoldville. Oh, if you want to do that, please go ahead too. Happy August, everybody. We're going to spend a crap ton of money. And I just realized on the economy page, uh, we need more social expenditure. Opera success. Awesome. 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 Oh, another two divisions. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're probably going to need them. Thank you for no, I just got up there, huh? Cool. Very nice. Keep working on all that stuff. Uh, grab it. So now it's already looking pretty good. It's looking better already. Not perfect, but you know, whatever. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Well, for other people. Um, the war on poverty. Poverty has been an immense drag on our society. It's plagued the United States since the dawn of the Industrial Revolution. Both in the cities and most rural communities, millions live in a state of squalor. A lack of economic opportunity has subjects generations of Americans to an endless cycle of hardship. No more. Now the United States is in a state of war against an enemy older and more elusive than any other nation. Poverty itself. Through new programs and initiatives, we'll stamp out poverty so that all can succeed thanks to the government's help in hand. So that's current programs. Uh, begin the pilot programs. Yeah, we'll get more daily political power, which is nice. Yeah. 
For Pre preparations are known to where President Johnson's clash with endlessly inhibiting forces of poverty. To begin with the struggle, will pass a series of small scale assistance programs while not creating a significant impact themselves. It will hopefully set the stage for even greater projects that are followed in the months. Uh, however, for now, we may offer benefits to America's poor in the short term. Ah, good. There you go. And the last one, Great Mirror's Nest. Do it twice as fast, maybe? If, that's that, if you click it on it twice, I mean, it takes up a hundred experience, don't get me wrong, but... Is there any more you can do? Or should be over soon, should be good. Hopefully it doesn't bug out, because sometimes it does bug out, which sucks. Um, command power, I could probably do that. Slam the brakes. Um, I ordered this one before. I think I have before, so. Yeah, if you wonder about this, please go ahead and remember your slow and steady wins the race. I'm going to try to not spend any more political power, if anything. Boost plus, not bad. 54 billion, not bad. Good expertise. I love that expertise there. Prevention is the best cure, of course. In areas where people are deprived of tools they need to succeed in today's economy, poverty takes root. For that reason, we must nip it in the bud before it can even be taken, or given the chance to bloom. Through establishment of higher education standards and grants where they're needed the most, we can ensure that America's youth are re-educated re enough to take on high-level jobs in an ever-changing economy. Oh, oh, we're going to this. Please go ahead. America isn't going away. You can be sure of that. We ain't going away, whether you like it or not. We're going to come here, blow up people, and then leave. Saturday morning, Tom and Jerry, if you want to do that, please go ahead. Nice. Cool. The quickest one is the Wisp one. Wisp one? This one. Yeah, that's pretty good. 1.25. That's pretty That's pretty, pretty decent, not going to lie. What do we have here? LBJ for the USA. I love Jumbo. Jumbo the Jumbo guy. Admin efficiency. It's not going to that much, but man, it's a decent amount. Not much. Create the Office of Economic Opportunity. That'd be really good for more political power, too. I like that a lot. President Johnson's campaign to lift America's poor out of the hardships will be a massive undertaking from start to finish. Creation of new bureaucracy and the many company programs necessitates coordination on a large scale. The Office of Economic Opportunity, uh, created on the President's orders, will organize all these programs and make sure that every initiative we take runs smoothly. A curious visitor. Um, you want to bit that? Please go ahead, too. I've definitely read that one before. Yes, we talk Republicans. Republican man. Republicans for Republican. Stanleyville. Peace count is over. Who died? They died. Keep it in mind, sir. If you want to do that, please go right ahead. Um, Trump, South Africa. If you want to do all these, please go right ahead as well. Uh, end of the beginning. I'll keep that in mind. Nice. Trump, South Africa. The dark continent no more. Very good. Very, very good. And this, this one Central African state I love, but it's destined to fail every single time, so we must keep the mandates as three separate in order to maintain stability. There's going to be another drain on political power. Oh, God, no. I can crack my goddamn. Hey, at least up. Uh, these guys should die, too. Establishment of African mandates. Good calls from DC. Oh god dang it. Oh man. Stability goes up. That's 50 put of power. Yeah, and the way to get a bunch from that. Two and a half days is not enough. Uh, federal. I always like federal stuff, so. I do warlord stance. Uh, promoting liberalism. You know what? Let's go liberalism. We're, we're LBJ. Increased by 3%. That's not very much. Doesn't cost all the money, so that's fine. Um, daily political power. Uh, let's see, five percent is not very much here. Two percent is not very much either. This one's five percent is pretty decent, but ten percent is honestly probably the way to go. So uh, East African Interim Unity Government, East Africa, five percent. Let's get that one. Operational success? Awesome. Happy November, everybody. And next year is going to be an election year. Yay! Yes, 
says, oh, it costs so much. You don't have the PP for it. Prevention is the best cure. Nice. Boys coming home. If you want to put that, please go ahead. Go to this one. Stop getting measures. Entry 43. Uh... Well, some cop thought it was a good idea to snoop behind the jalopy, so now my skull split open like a watermelon. Well, not actually split open, but you know what I mean. Alas, at least. I'm baked enough to shrug off the migraine a bit. Gotta ask Carlos where he gets his butt sometime. We're buddies, so it's no big deal, right? It's no fun grounding yourself in your own house because of an injury. Nothing to do but tope and watch the BS and media shovels. Maybe get around to finishing his coursework. Just kidding. I haven't touched a textbook in months. So just token and watch BS, pretty much. Seeing you, you're smug, or you're mug for a flash second before Cronkite plays a script about hooligans in the streets got old thin and quick. Oh, you thought I should get a hobby. I say, why bother? All I'm good at is smoking pot and giving myself a concussion for doing the decent thing. And that and the army's out to hand me my papers any day now. What do hobbies, hobbies matter when it's some warlord in Africa? It's bound to root on my chest with a little out either way. Can't understand her sometimes, honestly, but I guess that's part of her charm. Her helplessness and sunny uh, bright outlook, I mean. Another news, problems coming up. I can either go stag or we'll go with somebody. Kidding again, who's a poor sap who don't want to partner up with some poor old me, but the food's free and all that, that's all that matters. I'll probably just load around and leave as soon as I can get my full of the buffet line. See you the dance for the phonies. Lucky enough to have a pure future. I'll write more as soon as I find something new to talk about tomorrow. The day after that, next acid trip. Who knows? Peace out, Jules. Peace out. Healthcare for a nation. Um, community action initiative. You lose political power. Uh, proposed jobs core. The other political power continues to go down. Uh, Vista of the future. Ooh, that's not bad. That's pretty good, too. Common, uh, community action. Talk on the national and federal levels about fully addressing poverty is nice, but only through the mobilization of communities through... Throughout the nation, can we have a manpower needed to confront uh, economic abjection? With new outreach programs that would encourage participation in both the local and societal level, we can grant new opportunities to the poor and ensure that no one struggles to get by. The federal government serves as a guiding hand, leading impoverished communities wherever they are found to, be pro to prosperity. Look at all that. Ooh, three days left, huh? That's not good. I guess we'll see in just a little bit. Dictators and double standards. Um, if you're going with that, please go ahead. I'm sure I've read that one before, too. So. Remember, it's flame. Stop looking at that, hopefully. Disavow the Dixocrats. Good. Eh. So for now, probably. For now. Um, looking pretty good here. Just finish them off. Come on. Come on, guys. Finish them off. Having support 3%. We can vote that one, too. So now we get even more political power, which would be great. Consolidates previous costs, effectively reducing them by 50%. So, unity above all. I'm, probably sure, I'm pretty sure I did that one before. Our duty to the people, our duty to the country. We're going to have to pay for this all somehow. I'm thinking. Because we had to think about politics, and we'll be, be here for like eight years. It depends. We'll probably, I want to hit civil rights last. Offer success, good. We'll see. A madman's request. Remember that? Please go ahead. Sounds like a good idea to me. A growth increase by 0.05%. Oh, yeah. Immigration Nationality Services Act. Fair housing. Higher education is not bad, too. More costs. National Endowment, or National Endowment for Other Humanities. First broadcast, broadcast of PBS. Our work is never done. Of course it's not. It's never done. Let's go for so. All right. Where are we at? Oh, God. That's so bad. Angola and East Africa. We do home front. Wow, we're pretty high on everything. Political power for command and command for more command power. Sure, why not? Ooh, show up the OEO. Improve the social safety network. Increase cost, but more admin efficiency. Which is what we want. Reduce the support among voters in more conservative states. Robots will be more nationalist and join the Republican Party. Furthermore, the affected states will gain a small increase in their GDP. We really want to focus on the rural supporters. Um, anything else here? Clean up progress, rural supporters, all voters, 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 voters. Um, no states will approve of that, which is not bad. Voters, sweet talk Republicans. All voters. Ooh, reorganize the programs, that'd be good. Improve the social safety network for no cost, basically. And you get better poverty. A better pension and unemployment policy rate. I like that. Our image will worsen coastal states by improving others. Sanction ocean dumping, huh? 
Um, I don't think we really need very much else. Okay, maybe we need some uh, transport helicopters then. Uh, do we get something else here? Establish new national parks would be really cool, which we will do eventually. Yeah, let's go do it anyways right now. Call from the Wallace of Bennett. Feature of the our Republican Democratic Coalition meant that the Vice President was often asked to take one for the team if part of that coalition was upset. Ah, Vice President Muskie, Senator Wallace have been his pleasure, clearly registered over the phone. Is the President's Great Society simply going to involve throwing people at busy work on the taxpayer's dime? Muskie rolled in his eyes. Ben had never hit in sirens over losing the 64 primaries. Senator, the Office of Economic Opportunities is purely intended to compl complement the private sector and the state-level job assistance. Tell me then, Bennett remarked politely, on how on earth is the federal government supposed to know what jobs need filling in the scope field, you tell? I'm sorry, where? That's a point, Muskie. The OEO is trying to solve a problem that's better handed locally. Bennett said emphatically, if the president keeps going like this, we're going to find Republican voters slipping to George Wallace and his state's rights people. Some states can't help everybody, Senator. That's where we come in, Muskie countered. Just because it's going to be difficult doesn't mean we shouldn't try. Nothing's that great. Nothing great is ever easy. That's not good. A uh, vista of the future. A volunteers in service to America, or VISTA, program is the next proposal organization under the OEO umbrella aiming to provide lower-income communities with new opportunities while serving the rest of the nation. Similar to the Peace Corps, VISTA provides members with a steady income, health, health coverage, and a myriad of other benefits in exchange for volunteer service. Recipients will not only see other areas outside of the communities, but also gain skills needed to fulfill the many roles mandated by today's industrial economy. Let's get to work. Community unity. I remember that, please go ahead. I've, done, I've read that one multiple times. Yeah, definitely uh, East Africa is not looking good. 2% is just not worth it, though. This is better to do. We just need a little more command power, that's all. We need more war support, too. 5% is not bad for Angola. Nice. Oh, look at this. Let's, I'll pull out Africa now. We're good. I'm going to see if we hold on to it for as long as we can. Because we can. Heating pot. Um... Why do we have the heating pot? That makes no sense. We need to get a handle on this? That's stupid. We don't have heating pot. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Ash Sunny. Um, what is this? Not bad, not bad. Could be better, but that's okay. Happy New Year, everybody. It's 1966. Cool. This is the one. Yeah. That's good. Can get more 50? Yes. Manpower continues to deplete. It is what it is. I keep looking down here to see if there's anything else new, but there's not. I've got like another month with that stuff, so. Um, so after this one, Economic Opportunity Act. Pass a bill. Consolidate the program. Consolidate the previous costs, effectively reducing them by 50%. The less progressive states may be listed federal overreach. But the cost, man. Incentivize insurance companies. Approve the state of healthcare. Democratic Party. Health for a nation. Uh, but then, it hurts our political power. Stop gap measures. Uh, assist current programs. Before new programs can be proposed and passed into law, an inquiry into the federal current policy is needed or warranted. Currently, various welfare programs from past administrations exist with their own funds and bureaucracies. Under the executive branch, before moving to more bold measures, President Johnson has recommended an examination of these programs that determine the best method of management for future programs. Determine what is necessary and cutting the fat where needed would be also be prudent for the sake of fiscal responsibility. If you remember this? Please go ahead too. The new kind of city? Or an older one? We're stable for now. Sorry, panicking here soon enough. So with that done, that's good. We can probably go and use the FBI for federal, uh, not federal agents, but like, uh, do another stuff too. Oh, peace conference. Oh, look at the Ukrainian state. Goodbye. Jinky Patrick in Alexandria. If you remember that, please go ahead. Fire goes hotter. Okay, so we really need to do East Africa in our government. That sucks. Such a huge drain on our political power, though. We can't even get any more right now. Oh, that sucks a lot. 22 billion, 3% growth. Better poverty, yes. Poverty success, thank God. I'm going to spend that immediately. Where are the nationalists? It's almost February. Beautiful. 
Um, you know, we might as well just keep beelining through all this stuff. We could do that one, but we're going to keep going through here. Proposed jobs core. Youth unemployment rates in America are of great concern to the president as well as the Labor Department or De Department of Labor. In another project added to the regiment of proposed welfare and outreach programs, we aim to create the job score. This organization and the larger Department of Labor will provide education to equip America's youth for a multitude of fields as well as work until they can get back on our feet. The majority of their service <coughs> excuse me, will be spent improving national parks, impoverished communities, and other areas which have fallen under the responsibility of the federal government. Hopefully, the programs will provide vital training and experience to those who need it the most. Well, that's just, huh? Cool. We're going to vote R&D, baby. You, me, a whole bunch of RDs. We're going to lose three Democrat senators, which is not good. We're going to have a lot of support for Republicans. Jesus. The Nationals go down. Progressives go down. Wow. Um, it's a pretty solid South. But that don't surprise me, man. And unfortunately, we're all out of Red Bull. So. Oh, look at that. Evan, I like that one. Even though it does cost a little more, you do get to tax people a little bit more. And even though in my own life, I don't want anyone to tax me anymore because I'm already poor. But uh, in a video game, I'm okay, I'm okay with it. Expand the program. Ten more. A little more cost. Probably get better, though, still. But, ooh. Further, the affected states will gain a small increase in their GDP, which is nice. All voters will support the Democratic Party, but rural voters will support the Nationals. We're going to lose the rural vote. Which I hope we don't do, but, you know, whatever. It is what it is. Oh. Napalm use East Africa and Angola. Commit more troops. I do want to do this one, but I want to wait to get there. That's for the best just to wait. Sometimes the best game or best thing to do is just to wait. Solid file a food food stamps program. Alrighty, we have seen some great success within our food stamps program. And here is currently running the program, the impoverished have enjoyed greater access to food, as they no longer have to fight over scraps. This experiment has had its shortcomings. The administration burden has been higher than what expected. In addition to making sure the stamps are distributed to all who need them have proven difficult. As we continue to expand, we'll have to keep an eye to patch these kings uh, within the system. And a lot of the program's success is time to go nationwide. We immediately begin expansion into new states. Before too long, the entire nation will have to access the food stamps program. With the step of the war of poverty, we all closer to being one. Yeah, boy. Oh, and rural voters begin supporting the Democratic Party, yes. Oh, but also the Republicans. Ooh. Best you, Republicans. Alright, we can do the one at least for Angola for now. That one's very concerning, though. Scientists so flock to Africa. Well, we'll see. I'll probably do some funky stuff there, too, to make sure we do okay. Hey, we're weak on welfare, but hey, we're, we're getting better. Expand the job score? Yeah, that looks good. That looks really good. That's why I always keep coming down here. You never know what you might find. I would like to commit more, commit more troops, whatever. Economic opportunity, yeah. The vast majority of the poverty stricken are simply down on the luck, stuck at the bottom with no way out. It's not uncommon for citizens to simply lose their job and fall below the poverty line while it's unable to find new employment. We cannot allow people to fall by the wayside, forsaken and forgotten. President Johnson will be introducing a new bill designed to combat these issues. The Economic Opportunity Act will start by increasing unemployment subsidies and provide a government assisted service to find to new find to find new employment. Uh, not only this, the act will assist those already in the workforce, increasing federal minimum wage. This new bill will show the people what we are striving for, paving the way for future legislation. Yes, please. Ah. Eight three. Still not gain. We'll see what we can do. Well, we can spend uh, almost. Uh, it's not bad. Hmm. Yeah, do that one. Or right, we go in the environment too. Not bad. Not bad at all. Thirty-five point two minus point six. Oh Jesus! Congo's the Congo's doing really well. Never mind. Oh God. Uh, well, two percent. It's only twenty command power. How much do we get every day? Point six one. Not great. Uh, Hey, like that. A request from Mongolia. If you heard about that, please go ahead. Approve the request. It's only dead. Um... Oh, we don't need this anymore, anyways. Whatever. Oh, my bad. Cool. Nice. I think we're doing pretty well so far. Got rid of that tree over there. This stuff is going to be bad in the third generation warfare, but we only have to. Expand civil rights. Um, that's very isolating. We don't have to do that yet. We read that one too. Teach them new ways. I do want to do that one. And then then consult the program. So, all right. Operation success. Cool. Oh my god, that's so low. But that one looks okay. The Congo's okay. I don't want to do that one. Uh, oh, okay. So here we are. 
So the FPP doesn't like us, obviously, who cares? 27, or 28 plus 27, most Democrats and progressives are on board. Republicans are okay. There's plenty of room for compromise, but that's 100 more, 100 more political power that I'm not going to spend. Um, but that's over 55, so we should be fine. Get some more command power, because my god, we're going to need it. And expand, ooh, on food stamps. We're slowly running out of political power here, too. Reduce our support in amongst rural, more conservative states. Middling on welfare. Help poverty. Less states, less progressive states may feel a federal overreach. Child nutrition. Poverty will get better. I guess I'm spending so much political power right now. Oh my god. When I, I even played as the mandates here. Like, it doesn't even make sense sometimes, like, for what we see. Because sometimes they're actually doing okay. So, it just doesn't make any sense to me sometimes. Uh, consolidate the programs. Uh, I think I've not read this one yet, but during our administration, we managed to create several system programs throughout these great states. As self these programs may be, we've constantly been slowed down by the unending bureaucracy involved in running these programs on a state by state basis. In order to reach the greatest number of people, we're going to have to start cutting red tape. Unifying all of our programs under the federal government is sure to reduce both the administrative burden and lower overall costs. However, many will see this as an expansion to federal powers. We take control out of the state hands. Within the more conservative parts of our country, it's unlikely to be a popular measure. Yeah, good campaigns was good to have. Nice. Nice. Good. I like having good campaigns. Who don't? Maybe some people do like the struggle, but that's not me. Sometimes it's good to struggle, but not always. Not always is a good to struggle. Yeah, less than 50%, it's not bad, too. Cool. They're looking a little better now. 5%, that'd be a waste. Let's wait. Oh, yeah. Okay, so now we're not looking, proposing to look like we're going to lose any Democrats, which is nice. Um... Do the solid south. A lot of these places have only like one state that we might lose, which honestly really sucks. Campaign in the mid-Atlantic states. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Just don't spend so much political power right now. Oh, no, because we'll lose political power here. Consolidate previous costs, reducing them by 50%, which is great. Because you know that's not bad. Honestly, where we're at right now, and GDP is growing up. It's good. Another royal request. Uh, Figure about that. Let's go ahead. We'll have whatever he needs. That's fine. We'll probably lose Americans there, but whatever. Yeah, look at that growth goal. Inflation 6%, which is not great, but honestly, it's not that bad either. Look at that poverty rate going down. I love the change. It tastes so good. Hey, we're next daylight savings time. We're going to do that, that. Please go ahead. We're going to bear it. We're going to do that. Please go ahead as well. Or maybe I should do this too. Hmm. In a comfortable silence filled the situation room as the final speaker wrapped up the presentation, so in a cough and quickly suppressed it, seeing the gravity of the situation. All eyes were on the president, who took a few moments to process everything that was happening. At the beginning of the war, the cost seemed to be manageable. They were tough to bear, of course, but they were successful, even noble. Uh, as long as it increased, but month by month, the reports grew longer and longer, culminating in last month's reports, which showed such a high jump in casualties and lost equipment that it startled the usually non plus National Security Council. This month's reports, which looked favored, which were looked forward to, uh, were supposed to reverse this trend. Instead of the external accelerator, President LBJ picked up one of the reports. It was clear that fighting had now spread across the entire country and increasingly with their boys that had filled the gaps in half the free Indonesian army, with the resulting casualties. A stray idea weaseled its way into L President LBJ's mind. What if the U.S. left the war with the cut of losses in Iran? That thought was immediately rubbish. If you even ignore the enormous stakes, America had paid far too high a cost to leave them with nothing. So they would continue, then more of the boys would die in the Indonesian jungles. America would have to endure. All eyes were on the President, all in anxious anticipation of what the delusions or decision would be. The words that were spoken would leave no doubt of their resolve. We must win the war. There's no turning back. Of course. They're not even at war yet. I mean, they exploded, but they're not fighting each other yet. Yeah, I don't like that. It's just, it's very, it seems very odd. Oh, Jesus Christ. African, East African. Do that one. Congo seems perfectly fine. The Economic Opportunity Act passes, which is very, very good. Um, economic justice in the United States advances another step today as the Senate passes the Economic Opportunity Act. With a stroke of a pen, President Johnson will address or add another major accomplishment to his uh, progressive legacy. The bill not only increase the minimum wage, but also establish many new public jobs programs. It will guarantee good paying jobs for citizens while also leaving future generations plenty of new public works, including highways, parks, and waterways to enrich the society. In spite of conservative and moderate opposition and ambitious legislation to sail to confirmation of the Senate, Senator Barry Goldwater called the bill an atrocious interference by the government and business it has no understanding or, of, or appreciation for a while some conservatives claim a wave of layoffs will come with the bill's enactment. Much of credit for the bill appeared to allow President Johnson to use his voluminous experience in the Senate to nudge the bill across the finish line. 
With what's next on the present agenda, it's currently unknown, of course, but he's coming off a growing victory, and fatigue with his ambitious plan is soon to be growing. Even as Johnson pushes further and further, backlash becomes more and more likely. It's only by creating crossing the line that you learn how far you can really go. So we remove a great safety net, so we lose the political power, but it's low minimum wage to the moderate minimum wage, better industrial exper expertise and monthly change, poverty gets better, need because some goods goes up, but we replace low subsidies with moderate subsidies, so even more costs, way more costs, poverty gets better, poverty begins to improve, growth improves by 0.5%, improve the social safety network in the country, and urban voters and black voters will support the Democrat Party more. So get measures. Um, reduce our support. Well, we're going to reduce our support amongst ourselves no matter what. Um, teach them wealth. Let's do that one. On the most basic level, education. It's a process of instilling knowledge into children to prepare them for the job market. However, it extends beyond the practical applications. Education is more than teaching and testing. It's an investment in the nation's children. America's future. Well, the United States has produced some of the greatest technological inv innovators in the world, and effective teachers, and poorly funded at schools, continue to leave millions of children behind, depriving them of the ability and the freedom to succeed in a demanding economy. It's time for the federal government to intervene and to protect the, their future and the nation's. If you want to read about whales wanting to buy weapons, please go ahead. Yeah, boy. Pay out that debt. Oh, look at that big old debt de decrease. Ooh, surplus went really not good. And then teach. We're going to teach them well. The heads of our program to get even better poverty rate. In order to foster an education system where none are left behind, a new regime of, of agencies will need to be created. The proposed Head Start program, under the purview of the Department of Health and Human Services, will play a pivotal role in the creation of such a program. These programs aim to ease the transition from preschool to elementary school, improving learning abilities, and create a home environment that encourages rather than discourages school participation for students as possible. Head Start will entail the employment of teachers and the opening facilities throughout the country to aid low-income families. Self care measures would not be bad, but I don't want to isolate too many people, but assessing the current programs would not be bad either to do. Um... So we'll probably do this one as well off screen. Um, I don't mind doing a lot of this stuff because poverty, I just really want to focus on poverty. But I also think about the elections this year too. Blue Cross Blue Shield. Oh God. R Rain in the AMA. Huh. The Workers Healthcare Act. Pressure the states. So we got a lot to do. I definitely want to do this one cause, just because poverty get better, which I do want to do. Uh, teachers unions and whatnot, so I don't want to isolate too many people until we're in the second term, of course. But I think I'll end the episode here. If you enjoyed the episode, oh, we're already, already strong on welfare, uh, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll uh, see you tomorrow. I'll see you what else we can do, and make sure Africa doesn't completely explode. Thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day.